for 2065, and the words will be on the screen as well. It's called More Precious Than Silver. I'll play through it once and then join in singing. sound wonderful. And today's uh, anthem is a beautiful setting of, the, of um, the 23rd Psalm. It's called, Because the Lord is My Shepherd. And it has a refrain. And you're more than welcome to join in when the refrain comes. And because there's four verses, probably at least by the third verse, you'll get the hang of it. But let me play it for you once, just the refrain. You are my shepherd, you are my friend, I want to follow you always, just to follow my friend. That's all it is. I'll sing it one more time. You are my shepherd, you are my friend, I want to follow you always, just to follow my friend. So feel free to join in singing when that comes around. Um, we're going to do a special version of our response to the word, and Carrie will begin singing it um, as she finishes her message. It's number 2071 in the, in the Faith We Sing, and it goes like this. Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed Redeemer, living We'll sing that over and over a couple of times. Our closing hymn is number 2088, Lord, I Lift Your Name on High. Lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross my debt to pay from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky lord i lift your name on high so those are our hymns i think you do know the opening hymn 
Love divine, all loves excelling. So sing joyfully before the Lord this morning. Our worship will begin shortly. Thank you. silver Lord you are more costly than gold Lord you are more beautiful than diamonds and nothing I desire compares with you than silver Lord you are more costly than gold Lord you are more beautiful than diamonds and nothing I desire compares with you Lord you are precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Lord, you are more beautiful than diamonds, and nothing I desire compares to you. To worship at First United Methodist Church. We are so glad you're here and we welcome our YouTubers and our Zoomers and we hope that you'll reach out to us and call us during the week and let us know how we can serve you better. Today Jesus asked the question, who do you say that I am? And so that is the thought that we will carry through today's worship. And before we begin to do that worshiping, I'm going to invite Star to come forward. As part of our new healing ministries, June Wei and others, I think Sally and a few others um, have been very busy knitting prayer shawls. And so this is the first, the very first act of love and we hope healing for your husband David. And we ask God to bless it and may he feel all our love and prayers. Amen. Thank you.
let us rise as God calls us to worship this morning. Wake up, soul. Come and praise your God. Wake up, spirit. For your God deserves thanks. <laughs> Wake up, self, for your God awaits. We are awake. We have arrived. What name shall we give him? By what name shall we call him? Perfect, Perfect pure, pure, clear, clear right, right, pure, true, true Jesus, Jesus, name of all names. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, make your presence known to us as we worship this morning. Jesus, our Christ, may your name be praised from the rising of the sun to the midnight hour. May your name always be honored among us. Spirit of holiness, breathe on us all and bind us in Christian love and servanthood. O oh God, creator Christ and Holy Spirit, be known to us today transform our lives and our community into the image of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. Please be seated for the anthem. Oh, we jumped right, oh, we gotta sing, I'm sorry. I was so excited about giving the, uh, the prayer shawl today. <laughs> yes, please, 384 in your hymnals. Um, or up on the screen, love divine, all loves excelling. Thank you, Kathy. that second rest take away our bent to sinning help and omega be end of faith as it's beginning set our hearts at liberty come all my Suddenly return and never, never more thy temples leave. Thee we would be always blessing. Serve thee as thy host above. Pray and praise thee without ceasing. Glory. great salvation perfectly restored in thee changed from glory into glory till in heaven we take our place till we cast our crowns before thee lost in wonder love and praise please 
please be seated. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He lets me rest in the meadow and leads me to the quiet streams. He restores my soul and he leads me in the paths that are right. Lord, you are my shepherd, you are my friend. I want to follow you always, just to follow my friend. And when the road leads to darkness, I shall walk there unafraid. Even when death is close, I have courage, for your help is there. You are close beside me with comfort. You are guiding my way, Lord. You are my shepherd. You are my friend. I want to follow you always, just to follow my friend. In love you make me a banquet for mine enemies to see. You make me welcome, pouring down honor from your mighty hand. And this joy fills me with gladness. It is too much to bear, Lord. You are my shepherd. You are my friend. I want to follow you always, just to follow my friend. Your goodness always is with me and your mercy I know your loving kindness strengthens me always as I go through life I shall dwell in your presence forever giving praise to your name Lord you are my shepherd you are my friend I want to follow you always, just to follow my friend. Amen. Thank you, Tom. And now Liz will bring us the word this morning. Children's song. Kathy, I think I need you right here today. <laughs> well, you can get prepared, Liz, for the children to come up. We're going to sing you a song. Today is the first day that Sunday school is starting once again. Everybody says hallelujah. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Almighty God, we thank you for these children, and we thank you for their teachers. Bless them mightily in the year ahead that they form a relationship with you that will carry them through the rest of their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. 
Can't have fun. Our responsive reading this morning is from Psalm 19. You can find it in the hymnal on page 750, or the words will be on the screen. Please join me by reading the bold print. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the ferment proclaims God's handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are these words their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them God has set a tent for the sun, which comes forth like a bridegroom, leaving his chamber, and runs its course with joy like a strong man. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and there is nothing hid from its eat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned, to keep them there is great reward. But who can understand one's own errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Also keep your servant from the insolent. Let them have not dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Our gospel reading comes from Mark 8 this morning. We'll be reading verses 27 to 38, and I'll be reading from the New International Version. Peter declares that Jesus is the Messiah. <clears throat> Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, Who do people say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? And Peter answered, you are the Messiah. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then he called the crowd to him, along with his disciples, and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory 
with the holy angels. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O most holy God, Prince of Peace, Triune God, Salvation, I've taken two steps forward this morning and two steps back. I've been walking a crooked path, and yet your disciples know who you are and who I am and turn me back, and I am grateful. I pray that the message this morning will be received in the way that you have placed it on my heart. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We are now going to watch a video, and um, it's one we've all seen, but it bears remembering today on September 12th, as yesterday was September 11th. When it first happened, the minutes felt like hours. The hours felt like days. And the horror of what happened, one detail after another, could hardly be processed, much less understood. Then days turned into weeks, and weeks turned into years. Memorials were built, wars were fought, victims' names were read, Survivors tried to pick up the pieces, over and over again. But no matter how much time has passed, we vow to hold these memories. We will never forget those who were taken from us. The world changes and shifts this way and that. But one thing stays constant. One thing is steady. God, God weeps with us, God mourns with us, God bottles up our tears and records them in his book. He is closer to you than your own breath and remains the cornerstone of life. God is the solid ground holding us up as the world moves beneath us. It's as true today as it was on that day. Our God reigns. He reigns over principalities and powers. His dominion stretches beyond what our eyes can see. And when the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, our God reigns. We will always remember. of the Lord is a strong tower. We are reminded today that we shouldn't forget that tragedy. But as the video stated, we should re also remember there was one constant, one, and that was our God, the God who wept, who mourned, bottled up our tears, and held them fast the same God who is the cornerstone of our faith. Our strong tower was there amid the horrifying attacks on September 11th. That same God, my friends, is still here today, both in tragedy and in joy. And it was the same God in human form that asked the important question, who do you say that I am? I wondered, do you have a particular way of addressing Jesus? Does anyone have a different name, perhaps, they might call Jesus friend? or I'm sure some of you do. Some might call Jesus the Christ. Some may say Savior. Some may say Prince of Peace. And some may say Perfector of our faith. 
And whatever we choose to call Jesus, we know that Jesus is part of that triune God, three persons in one. And I think Jesus' question in today's lesson is an important one for us today. If we cannot define Jesus with a name or in our own terms and how Jesus plays a part in our lives, how are we going to share our understanding of him to others? We are a people that the world often does not understand. And sometimes the world doesn't take us seriously. Perhaps it's because we haven't named or claimed Jesus. Perhaps it's because we haven't figured out how to explain Jesus to others, to those who don't know him or who have no faith. Maybe it's because we don't know him well enough ourselves. We might even be tempted to say, well, yeah, the world is clueless. And we might do that to hide our insecurities or to hide our fears and possibly even move away from having to introduce Jesus to others. I suppose it may be somewhat true that the world does not understand, especially those who have no affiliation with church or who've never been introduced to Jesus. So Jesus has been misunderstood through the centuries by nearly everyone. The early disciples were thinking that he was this powerful king that was going to lead them into victory from under Roman rule using military force. The Pharisees and scribes thought he was nothing more than a religious imposter using powers of demonic forces to make his miracles happen. Now, the Jews anointed only three classes of people, priests, prophets, and kings. Some of them believed that Jesus was all three. Some believed that he was none. Because early Christians believed in monotheism, the no other God except the one God of Israel, Jesus could not have possibly been God in their minds. Some didn't believe that he was the Messiah. Some believed he was just a great man, perhaps the most powerful that they had witnessed. It's no wonder Jesus had to ask the question, who do people say that I am? If they didn't get that he was the Messiah, the Christ, the Son sent from God, the Prince of Peace, salvation of the world, he still had work to do. He still had a lot of work to do to convince them he was who he said he was. And so then he takes it a step further. He looks directly at his own disciples and says, who do you think that I am? We have got to be ready to answer that question when someone says, who is Jesus to you? Who is Jesus to you? How do you call him? I think we can safely say we know who Christ is. Right? Yeah, we do. And we know who we are. We know we each have a worldly identity. And that worldly identity really doesn't enter when we come together under Christ's name. We're no longer the math teacher or the doctor, the nurse, the administrator. When together, we identify differently. We have a different name. We are children of God. We are members of God's family. By coming together under God, we find we take on new personas. First, we're friends, we're followers, we're givers, we're exhorters. Those are the cheerleaders for Jesus, right? We're evangelists, we're prayer warriors, we're teachers and preachers and biblical scholars. We're laborers in God's vineyard. It is easy to say who we are when we are 
together, but can we say who Jesus is? But more importantly, how Jesus has transformed our lives. We've got to be able to tell our own stories. So we have a title, and we claim it forever, Child of God. But it's up to each individual to keep the parent-child relationship intact. Okay, so we know who we are. And we're pretty sure we know who Jesus is, but there are still people in the world who don't know, and that is our duty to teach them. And I think it's because of fear they don't know Jesus. Why? Because following Jesus takes courage. It is cross-bearing. It's self-denial, and it frankly, is not attractive to people. It's hard work following Jesus. But in order to truly know him, we must follow, even when he says very difficult things to us. Those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. It's hard to follow. Yale graduate and award-winning journalist Lee Strobel wrote a book, The Case for Christ, and it's a wonderful book, and I highly recommend it. In this book, he says, we know Jesus was a revolutionary. He was a rebel. He was a sage, a scholar. People could go to him and get their questions answered. He was iconoclastic, which meant he was radical and individualistic. But was he God? Lee Strobel said that thought never occurred to him. And I know that that thought has, a, has not occurred to some people as well today. They, they separate God and they separate Jesus and the Holy Spirit, and they forget it's a triune God, three persons in one. So if someone, like an award-winning journalist who has written multiple, multiple books like Lee Strobel can question Jesus as God, are we surprised that 2,000 years prior people were questioning who he was? No. And we shouldn't be surprised either that the question still remains today. Our district superintendent just this past week shared a list of names that she has heard throughout the ages of her ministry of how people name and claim and call Jesus. And she shared them, Lamb of God, name above all names, majestic, king, redeemer, bread of life, prince of peace, friend, perfect, true. So many, and her list went on and on. Do you know there's 198 different names and titles of Jesus in the Bible? Someday we ought to just name them together. Every single one. And then we will be able to say, I know who Jesus is, and let me tell you how Jesus has changed my life. As I was listening to the video of September 11th, I heard words that pop out that spoke to my heart, names that I would give Jesus today, weeper, mourner, tear catcher, cornerstone, strong tower. I thought all of those names would be perfect for Jesus. Then in the psalm, words jumped out at me, perfect, sure, Right, clear, pure, true. All words I would love to give Jesus. I would feel good about using those as names for God. So as I contemplated those words, I asked myself, Carrie, who do you say Jesus is? Me. Just me. 
And so I went into a discernment prayer, and I came out with one word, and this word I really like, and I think I'm going to use it from now on. If Jesus were to ask me, who do you say that I am, I would reply, need. You are my need. I am your need. The world needs your power. The world needs your love. The world needs your grace. The world needs your forgiveness. Yes? From now on, I'm going to call Jesus need. And I would like to close with a poem that is based on multiple scripture lessons by an unknown author, just the initial JD, that I found on moreillustrations.com because this is, this is Jesus, this is need, this is pure, this is true, when we forget who Jesus is. And it begins with a synopsis of how the poem came to light for this person. A group of Bedouin women were listening for the first time to the preaching of the gospel. It was all new to them, and one woman was afraid that she might even forget the name which had fallen so sweetly on her ears. Tell me, tell me the name again, she pleaded and return to her wandering life with the name of Jesus as her one link to eternal truth. As she wandered, tell me the name again, lest I forget it, the name of him who died to set me free. Tis Jesus, Savior, Never wilt thou forget it if thou wilt let his love lay hold on me. His name above all other names is glorious. A place of refuge is the day of strife. To trust him fully is to be victorious in every hour and circumstance of life. Tell me the name when the day is dawning ere through the busy world my way i take tis wonderful he'll gild the dullest morning if thou wilt live thy life for jesus sake tell me the name when noontide finds me viewing with anxious eyes the problems that oppress Tis counselor, thy failing strength renewing, he'll teach thee wisdom, banish thy distress. Tell me the name, when life's short journey ending, my senses fail, my mortal eyes grow dim. Tis prince of peace, all human peace transcending, he'll give thee rest, Thou shalt abide with him. Tell them the name is beauty, it's perfection. Who never heard our blessed master's fame. Tell of his life, his death, his resurrection. Tell of his power to save. Tell them the name. Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, join me, God is with us, blessed be Jesus, name above all.
come on, it's Jesus. Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed Redeemer. Thank you, Need. Amen. Let us be and continue to be in a spirit of prayer. O oh God, whose name is above all, above every other, every name, we invoke your presence with mingled joy and hesitation, with joy because we know that before we turn your direction, you have already turned in ours, yet with hesitation because we also know that as we have been quick to claim you as our heavenly parent, we have been slow to claim our neighbors as sisters and brothers. Forgive us. Despite our smallness, you have not withheld your name or your presence, and this is why we can boldly ask prayers of you for the needs of the world, for the lost and forgotten, the hungry and the sick, for those who lost lo loved ones in 9-11, for those who are losing loved ones daily from evil attacks, for those who are ill, for June's niece Grace, who fell and broke two bones in her ankle, for the strength for David as he continues with his treatments, may his prayer shawl envelop him in your grace, for Judith as she heals from a concussion for Sue's mom, Carol, who is improving, and we are grateful, but still curious and not understanding what this illness is, may complete healing be upon her. For Janet, who suffers from ALS. For Vi, June's friend, who is having hip replacement surgery this week. For Jan Hughes, as she celebrates and lays her mother path. To rest today and we thank her for the beautiful flowers on our altar in memory of her mom Pat Kenny for Steve we continue to ask for hope and courage as he continues to wait in uncertainty we trust you O oh need we trust you O oh truth we trust your Will is health and wholeness for all those we have named today and the others we have not said out loud. O oh Lord, we pray you will intercede in desperate times to show the world a different way. Your power is needed, your presence a must, your grace for a new way and your forgiveness as Jesus taught us to forgive in this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we take a moment of silence to reflect on the many givings and gifts God has given us 
And we say to God, receive our gifts, O Lord, and with them receive the firm intention of this faith community. And we do have offering baskets at both entrances and exits of the church building. We pray that you will consider giving of your abundance. Or you may go to umcburlington.com and click on the giving banner. And together we will now pray the doxology. We give to maintain Christ's values. We give to sustain Christ's work. We give to strengthen Christ's community. We give because we remember Christ's cross and experience his risen hope. Receive our gifts and bless them, O Lord. Amen. Our life this week is quiet. We do have our regular book studies tomorrow at 1 and at 6.30, and our regular conversations with the beloved, with the exception there is no connecting this week. Uh, we do have a church council on Wednesday at 7 p.m. It will be um, here in the sanctuary so we can be safe and d safely distanced. Um, there's also a letter on the back table from our um, district superintendent encouraging um, United Methodist women to attend a resource event, which is coming up on the 25th. So I encourage you to look at that letter. There's also, um, we're getting ready, I know it's early, but for Advent, there's a small book, devotional book on the back table. If it looks like something that you would like to participate in, um, it's a daily devotional, just like three minutes. Um, that's what we're going to be using for the, um, during the ad, four weeks of Advent on Monday evenings. And it'll just be an hour-long session, and we'll talk about um, what spoke to us during the week. So if you are interested, there's a sign-up in the back. I invite you now to stand, and together we will recite the benediction. After... After, <laughs> you still got to stand while we sing this hymn. Lord, I lift your name on high. I carried it all the way through, Kathy. Aren't you proud of me? 2088, in your faith we sing. It is time for new glasses, clearly. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high.
you came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross my debt to pay from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky lord i lift your name on high And together, let us pray the benediction. O God, whose name we have praised in the house of worship, make us equally quick to exalt your name in the world of work. As here we have honored you with the words of our mouths, let us therefore honor you with the deeds of our hands. Go in peace, my friends, proclaiming the joy of our Savior. Amen.